Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. This is edition number 125 of season four of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill, the pastor of Providence Church, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. We are located in Evansville, Indiana, and there's more information about the church. Um, You can find more information about the church at the conclusion of the devotional for today. We are working our way through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Today we come to question number 90. Let's pray first and then we'll consider this question and answer just briefly uh, this morning. Father, as we come now uh, again to your word, we uh, come with the hope and expectation that you will remember your promises to your people, that as we ask for your spirit, he will guide us, he will teach us. And so we do pray for your Holy Spirit who penned your word Uh, that he would now accompany all that is said and all that is considered. Uh, We ask that it would not merely be that which we understand with our minds, but it would also then move into our hearts and our actions in life. We pray as we consider these very important truths that you would give us the grace and the guidance that we so desperately need. Forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us to walk in your ways, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we have come now uh, to question number 90. Much of this is um, born out of uh, the matters that have been fleshed out from question number 85, what doth God require of us that we may escape his wrath and curse due to us for sin? And We've already considered this question just briefly. Um, God requires of us faith in Jesus Christ, and so we considered that aspect in question number 86. Repentance unto life, we considered that in question number 87, and then the diligent use of all the outward means whereby Christ communicates to us the benefits of redemption. We consider that, we began we began to consider that in question number 88, and now we come to question number 90 as one of the outward means whereby Christ communicates to us the benefits of redemption. One of them is the Word, uh, the Word of God, the Bible, uh, of course, sacraments and prayer. And so what we have here in question 90 is a focus now in on uh, the scriptures itself, Uh, really began in question number 89, but now in question 90, a very practical question where it asks, how is the word to be read and heard that it may become effectual to salvation? The answer is that the word may become effectual to salvation. Um, We must attend thereunto with diligence, preparation, and prayer receive it with faith and love, lay it up in our hearts and practice it in our lives. Okay, so there's a number of issues here that this catechism question gives to us. The uh, parallel uh, uh, question in the larger catechism uh, is larger catechism 160, though that speaks specifically about how we are to attend to the preaching of God's word. Question 90 is a little broader, um, both in its reading of the scriptures, both privately and publicly, as well as hearing the word preached or proclaimed. And this is how then it becomes effectual to salvation, very practical things that are contained within this question. These are things that every Christian should endeavor to do every time, uh, they, uh, every time the scriptures are read, whether you are reading them or whether you are hearing them read publicly or whether, or whether um, you are hearing the word uh, preached. And so the first aspect here is that we are to attend, uh, we must attend thereunto with diligence, preparation, and prayer. Now those are three different items. Um, We are to give our wholehearted effort and labor into this process of hearing the word preached and reading the word, whether we hear it read or we are reading it ourselves. We are to attend to it with diligence. We are to be uh, mindful of what we are doing. Uh, we are to give our whole heart and attention to it as a vitally important thing, like we would give our attention to some, some other activity that has a significant importance. We are to prepare for the reading of it. And one of the ways you can do that, of course, very simply, is that you ask the Holy Spirit uh, for help and guidance as you read the scriptures. We do that in the morning devotional because we're conscious of the fact that we need the Spirit's help. But when it comes to the the worship of God or the preaching of the scriptures, there's other things you can do. If your pastor is like me and he's preaching expositionally through books, you can read the passage ahead of time, maybe sit down with your family and you can talk 
about these things together. You can prepare your minds, your hearts for the worship of God and the hearing of the Word of God preached. You can uh, pray uh, that you might be fed by the Scriptures. Pray for your pastor as he, del as he prepares, as he studies them. Uh, there's many different ways in which we can prepare to hear God's Word. And then, of course, we do so with prayer. Now, I've mentioned that as part of the diligent, diligence aspect, the preparation aspect, but uh, it's vitally important that we always remember the centrality of prayer when it comes to hearing the Word. We need the Spirit of God to teach us. Without Him, we would not understand these things. And we are not smart enough. We are not wise enough to do so anyway. So we need His help, and He penned them. So um, it's to the Spirit that we ask. We ask our Father in Heaven to grant us the Spirit that He might teach us these truths. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 16, we read, There you shall not... Um, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at, at Massa. You shall diligently keep his commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may go well with you, and that you may go in and take possession of the good land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers by thrusting out all your enemies from before you as the Lord has promised. Now here, of course, um, the people of Israel, the church of old, is being commissioned, they're being commanded to be diligent about keeping God's law, keeping his word. And, and the reason why we need to be told these things is because we are fleshly people, we are uh, sinners, and uh, it, it's not natural for us to do these things. We need, uh, we need to be told, we need to be commanded, we need to be reminded of the vitality and the importance of these uh, matters. In Psalm 119, verse 18, there uh, we read, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Now that indicates that we need to bathe our reading of Scripture and our hearing of the Word of God preached uh, with prayer that we might see, that we might behold, that our eyes might, uh, might be opened, that our ears might be opened, our minds and our hearts ready to receive that which the Spirit of God has for us. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. Now, if you've ever observed uh, a ch an infant, they, uh, they don't want much. Uh, very little, few things in life matter to them at that point in life, but food is certainly one of them. They want to be fed, and when they want to be fed, they are diligent about letting us know, letting parents know that they're hungry. Well, we need to approach the Scriptures in the same manner. We need to approach it with a hunger and a thirst uh, for righteousness that comes out of the reading uh, that is uh, demonstrated in the reading and as well as the preaching of, the, of God's Word. And so uh, the problem for most people in the church is that they approach the reading and preaching of the Word of God, especially the preaching, and then they'll say things like they didn't get anything out of that sermon or, or um, you know, it didn't benefit them, it didn't help them. That's because they spent zero time or very little preparing to hear the Word of God. Um, preached and proclaimed. They didn't spend any time praying about the sermon and, and what they were about to hear and how they desired, uh, f like infants, to be fed and nourished by the truth of God's Word. And so these are matters that all relate to how the Scriptures become effectual to salvation. And it goes on to say, receive it with faith and love, lay it up in our hearts and practice it in our lives. And so the classic verse, of course, is Psalm 119, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And while that's not merely talking about Scripture memory, it's talking about meditating on Scripture and, and sealing the Scriptures into our hearts that it might then show up in our lives, it's not divorced from med uh, memorizing Scripture. And, and I encourage people to do that. It's, you're never too old to memorize Scripture. And so just begin somewhere and start working your way through either a book to memorize the whole book itself or uh, a, a series of verses speaking to one particular subject. One suggestion I have for people is if they're wrestling with a particular sin is to 
find verses in the Bible that speak to that matter and then allow yourself to meditate upon those verses and, and, and then memorize them as well so that, that you might be able to draw on them through the day as you are uh, able. Of course, it would be great if people would memorize and meditate upon the sermons that are preached um, after the Lord's Day that they would not so quickly forget what the pastor labored so uh, hard and, and so diligently to prepare and, and deliver. But the fact is that we are forgetful people. But we're more forgetful because we don't lay hold of uh, the simple means by which we might remember these, these things. We don't lay them up in our hearts. We don't seek to memorize the Word of God. We don't seek to apply them to our lives. And the pastor should be doing that in the sermon, but he's not going to be able to cover everything uh, in a sermon that might apply to your heart and mind uh, as you're listening. Hebrews 4, 2, For good news came to us, just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. That is to say that we need to believe that the preaching of the Word is, in fact, the Word of God insofar as it's faithful to the Scriptures. That as you read the Word, of course, it is the Word of God. And we need to believe that God has, has, has ordained the Scriptures uh, as the all-sufficient uh, revelation of his mind to us to help us in our journey as a light unto our path. If we don't believe the Bible is the Word of God, if we don't believe preaching is useful, then it's not going to profit us at all. It's not going to become effectual to salvation. And then finally in James 1, uh, verse, um, verse 22 to 20, verses 22 to 25, but, de but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he looks like. Now, that's ridiculous, of course. And this morning you looked in a mirror, likely, and I'm pretty sure you still know what you look like. Um, I have a beard. I have... You know, I, I, I know my facial features. I don't need a mirror to, to, to point those out. I know them. Um, but too often in the pews in the church today, people hear the Word of God, and that's all. They, they're just hearers of it. And as soon as it's done, they're done hearing, they're done. Uh, they don't do anything with it. That is to say, they don't seek to practice it in their lives. There's no fruit. And so it goes on. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. And so we don't just hear the sermons, we don't just hear the Word of God read, we don't just read the Word of God, but we apply it to our lives, we memorize and meditate upon it, and we seek to practice what we hear. Otherwise, it's fundamentally pointless, and it's not effectual to our salvation. So we don't want to be just hearers only. We want to be obedient children as well. Now, I've written a pamphlet about uh, getting the most out of a sermon, that if someone would like me to send that to, them, to you, I may, I, I'd be glad to do that. Um, but it's a very simple process by which you can incorporate into your daily life uh, the sermons that you hear each Lord's Day and use those uh, to uh, feed upon and to um, think upon and memorize and meditate and then seek to practice uh, throughout the week. Um, and I would encourage that being the primary source of your devotional life. It doesn't have to be the only one, but it is the primary means of grace. Preaching is the primary means which God feeds, shepherds, and guides His church. And so we need to make that the priority uh, aside from these other devotionals that are out there which are useful and helpful and I'm not saying anything bad about them. But let's focus on the main thing first. And let's settle that before we move on to these other extracurricular items that while, while they may prove to be helpful, the primary means of grace is a minister of the gospel who loves you, who knows you, who stands before you each Lord's Day and proclaims the word of God to you and probably talking about you from time to time, though he may not say your name. He's doing that because he loves you and wants to see you persevere to the very end to bear fruit in your life. And so lay hold of that main means uh, before we engage in others. And so these are the ways in which the Word of God becomes effectual to salvation. We attend to it with diligence, preparation, and prayer. We receive it with faith and love, lay it up in our hearts. We practice it in our lives. And as the church does that, 
she will be much stronger for it. Well, I trust that these times are helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions, the way to contact me is there before you on the screen. And so until the Thursday edition, when we begin to look at how the sacraments become effectual means uh, of salvation, may the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May he be gracious to you. May you walk in his ways. God bless.